Back in the last section, we talked about how the sine was an odd function and the cosine was an even function. From a mathematical perspective, this meant that the sine of negative x was equal to the negative sine of x while the cosine of negative x was equal to the cosine of x. We call these the negative identity functions. We can use them to derive negative angle identities for all of our other trig functions. The tangent of negative x is equal to the sine of negative x divided by the cosine of negative x. The sine of negative x is negative sine of x over the cosine of negative x is cosine of x, which gives us the negative tangent of x. So the tangent is an odd function. Secant of negative x. Secant of negative x is 1 over the cosine of negative x, which is 1 over just the cosine of x, which is the secant of x, making the secant even. The cosecant of negative x is equal to 1 over the sine of negative x, which is 1 over the negative sine of x, which is the same as the negative cosecant of x, making the cosecant an odd function. And finally, the cotangent of, x, of negative x is equal to the cosine of negative x divided by the sine of negative x, which is the same as just the cosine of x, divided by the negative sine of x, which gives us the negative cotangent of x, which demonstrates that the cotangent is an odd function as well. This is now a complete list of our negative angle identities. What does this mean for us? Well, if we have a negative angle and need to take its cosine or its secant, we can just ignore the negative. But if we have a negative angle and need to use any of the other trick functions, we pull the negative out in front. These seem like small changes, but understanding these identities will make it much easier to solve many of our equations. Another type of identity relationship can be very interesting in helping us to understand how our different trigonometric graphs are related. If you recall, back when we were looking at solving right triangles, we were able to identify the following relationship. That the sign of one non-right triangle, the opposite over the hypotenuse, was the same as the cosine of the other non-right triangle, or non-right angle, adjacent over hypotenuse. Since all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, and one of the angles had to be a right angle, or 90 degrees. So if we call one of our angles alpha, the other angle will be 90 minus alpha.
subtracted that the wrong way. There we go. So we could say that the sine of alpha equals the cosine of 90 minus alpha. Now, we are dealing with uh, circles and graphs. We'll pretty much be sticking with radians instead of degrees. So we can say that the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. When we want to talk about graphing our trigonometric functions, however, we generally like our angle inside the trig function to come first to better determine our horizontal shifts. So we can factor out a negative one from inside the trig function. Or rewrite this as the sine of theta equals the cosine of negative theta minus pi over 2. Since cosine is even, according to the negative angle identity for cosine, we can just ignore that negative inside and say just that the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta minus pi over 2. That is, our sine function curve is just a cosine curve shifted to the right by pi over 2 radians. Let's try looking at the cosine version of this relationship. The cosine of theta equals the sine of 90 minus theta. make that pi over 2 minus theta. Factor out the negative. Reorder. However, this time, since the sine function is odd, the negative needs to be pulled out in front. giving us the shifted angle relationship cosine of theta equals negative sine of theta minus pi over 2. That is, the cosine graph is the same as the sine graph shifted to the right by pi over 2 radians and then reflected over the x-axis. Remember how in the last video we talked about the tangent looks like a shifted or the cotangent looks like a shifted tangent function flipped over the x-axis. Let's prove that using these new shifted angle relationships. Cotangent of theta equals the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. Using our relationships up here, cosine of theta is the negative sine of theta minus pi over 2 over the sine is equal to the cosine of theta minus pi over 2. And that is the negative tangent of theta minus pi over 2. That is, the cotangent function is the same as the tangent function shifted pi over 2 to the right and then flipped oops, over the x-axis the negative out in front. We can do the same type of proofs for all the trigonometric functions and get the following full uh, list of shifted angle relationship identities. So 
sine of theta equals cosine of theta minus pi over 2. Cosine theta equals the negative sine of theta minus pi over 2. Tangent of theta equals the negative cotangent of theta minus pi over 2. Secant theta equals the negative cosecant of theta minus pi over 2. Cosecant of theta equals the secant of theta minus pi over 2. And the cotangent of theta is equal to the negative cotangent, or negative tangent, rather. theta minus pi over 2. I recommend that you keep a running tally of all the major identities that we learn in this class and create a formula list for yourself. When we work to prove identities or to solve equations, it will be nice to have a full list of the identities we've learned close at hand to use for a reference to help you establish equality and move you forward in solving a problem at what would otherwise seem a dead end. So far, we have three versions of the Pythagorean identity, our trigonometric definitions, and now we can add the negative identities and the shifted angle identities to that list.